Welcome to week six action here. A great matchup in Central Florida. Second week of district play. The Dr. Phillips Panthers come in with a record of two and three, led by head coach Rodney Wells, facing off against the West Orange Warriors. Mike Granado brings the Warriors in at three and one. I'm joined here tonight on the call by Kyle Hayes. The Warriors are new to the Panthers district with realignment this last year. Both the Osceola Cowboys and the West Orange Warriors have joined Dr. Phillips for this one singular season in this district. And Kyle, we got an interesting, one of the best stat lines ever in Central Florida sports, especially in Orange County. The Dr. Phillips Panthers have a 50-game district winning streak. The last time they lost was November 2nd, 2007, a 14-13 defeat at Boone High School to Phil Ziegler's Boone Braves, who would go 14-1 that year, reaching the state title game before they lost. You can bet that's on the minds of everybody in Orange tonight. When they saw the district alignment, you knew they marked, they circled this date on the calendar that they were going to be the ones to end that streak. Yeah, we definitely going to find out tonight, man, when it comes to the West Orange Warriors, man. Can they put the nail in the coffin to kill the streak that's going on? I mean, that's very impressive, especially in the state of Florida with so much talent going around. And that's kudos to Dr. Phillips to let them know, man, they've done such a great job there in having these programs, keeping it going, also with some coaching changes and still keeping it, keeping it alive, man. Dr. Phillips, that year... The first year they won the district championship, D. Hart, Ha Ha Clinton Dix were sophomores. Not three years later, in 2010, they were in the state final. They've been in the state final since three times. This is a proud program that they know that they don't want to be the one to drop the ball and let this streak in. The Panthers will come out on offense, led by senior quarterback Curtis Argroves, 5'11", 205 pounds. This is a lot, a lot of new players on this offense coming in this year. We saw them in week one against Jones. They had a difficult night that night. First right. half, they couldn't move the ball. Second half, they established the run, the run game. tried to find an identity, but you could tell they were still searching. They've had five games under their belt. They've lost in lopsided contests to both Jones. Last week, a humiliating defeat to the Lake Mary Rams, one of the most interesting stories in the entire state blown out at Lake Mary to Doug Peters' team 38-3. to That doesn't happen to a Dr. Phillips program. You can bet they've had a good week of practice, a physical week of practice. Let's see what they got here with Argroves taking the first snap. Off tackle to Rodney Wells Jr. We saw this West Orange defense over at Apopka High School earlier in the year. You want to talk about two of the best defenses on display that night. You weren't on the call that night. But nobody could pick up a first down. Look for the Warriors to play this 4-3 defense. Too high safety shell. They know Dr. Phillips wants to run it. They're going to take away the run. Press coverage already at the line of scrimmage. They're going to make the Panthers beat them in the air. Argroves with the fake off tackle to the left. Brings it back behind the guard. Pickup of about two at best, setting up a third and eight. Yeah, you know what's special about this, like we said, man, Dr. Phillips started this season off earlier, throwing the ball around the yard. I think they found their bread and butter in all of these new players that they've gotten on this team and say, you know what? We're going to run this ball, man. We, especially we got a big-time talent. We have a big-time talent, Mr. Peyton Kirkland. We're going to run this ball behind him, man. He sought after all the Division One programs want this young man. He's a big-time talent, and we're going to see the Dr. Phillip Panthers do that tonight. Kirkland goes 6'5", 330 pounds, rated by 247 Sports as the 10th best offensive tackle in the class of 2023. Kind of a homecoming for him. He started for the Warriors at left tackle as a freshman. Left for Dr. Phillips last year as a sophomore. Now he's a junior. Argroves with a quick pass out in the flat. Blanket coverage by the outside linebacker, Quentin Hatch. Nowhere to go for the senior quarterback. Argroves wisely throws it out of bounds. And just that quick, not a minute and 32 seconds into the game, already Dr. Phillips brings their punter, Jaden Taylor, out on the field. 
Yeah, you know, Dr. Phil, like I said, they have to establish something, right? We know they're getting back into the run game, but they have to win on first down. In order for them to get this thing going, first downs have to be a win. They have to be on the plus side of the stick. Once they get behind the stick, it's definitely going to be tough sledding for them. So we'll find out as this game goes along what kind of adjustments Coach Rodney Wells will make in this contest. Matthew McNoom back here on the near hash on the home sideline. You don't want to kick it to him. He is one of the most dangerous returners in all of Central Florida, but with young kickers, as you know, when you try to angle kick away from an explosive return man, it sometimes doesn't go the way you want it. That time the kick only nets 13 yards. Tyler Huff will bring the Warrior offense out to take the first possession with 10-18 to go. Warriors are going to go fast. We will not have time to step away for a commercial. They're one of the fastest offenses in Central Florida. They like to click, click plays off. Huff, the senior quarterback, comes in. Dotted right behind him in the pistol will be Terrell Walden Jr., an explosive senior tailback, 5'10 in height. Warriors come out with three receivers up top. Motion across, fake the motion. Walden up inside off the left side. Demario Tolan shows quick the LSU commit. Doesn't make the tackle, but stops his charge for about a two-yard gain. Yeah, man, great job right there. We've seen the West Orange Warriors come out. They use a little motion to try and find out what they're going to be in. But we already know Dr. Phillips here is playing that safety position. They're going to lock up sometimes. But they'll probably play zone in front of it, keep everything in front of them, and they'll definitely make this thing happen because they got some outstanding linebacker play when it comes to Dr. Phillips. Motion again. This time they fake it. Wheel route up the sideline to Eddie Kelly down inside the 20-yard line. They're going to mark him out of bounds. Actually at the 20, good for a first down on the second play of scrimmage. Chains are moving. Terrence Tolbert is the offensive coordinator, longtime coordinator in the West Orange program. Left the last couple years to join Rich Bettison's staff at Wakaiva High School. He's back. He's considered. He's home. Excellent wheel route up the sideline. Against the zone coverage, Kelly in motion again. Comes back in, leading on a linebacker, Walden behind him. And that's what Walden can do. Let him get through the line of scrimmage to the second level. And he is so powerful to bring down. Quick pickup of nine yards, setting up a second and one with 9.06 on the clock. Yeah, he's not very big in stature, it seems to be right, but he runs behind his pads. He's strong, he's quick, and he darts. That's the biggest thing. As you see him get through there, he knows how to get skinny between the gaps. Man. Walden comes into tonight's contest with the team leader in all-purpose yards this season with 259 for the Warriors. Two-by-two two formation, Walden into the boundary. Looking up top to his outstanding receiver, hand jostling, trying to get the ball to Rocky Rudolph, the 6'3 senior. Rudolph comes in with two touchdowns, like the play call on second and one. I love the play call. Didn't really necessarily like the throw. The throw was a little flat. You got a 6'3 wide receiver, throw it up there. There's no safety help. Let him jump ball. Let's see if they can get a rebound off the glass for the touchdown. Walden averages 10.2 yards per catch. One on one with a corner already. Coach Hayes, I can see personnel changes on the Dr. Phillips defense from the lineup we saw against Jones High School in week one. Bring the big back in that time off the left side of the line of scrimmage goes Jesse Shannon, 5'10", junior. Shannon averages 8.1 yards per carry. That time he takes it for about four down to the eight-yard line, setting up first and goal. Yeah. 8.28 on the clock and winding. Great, great call right there, right? It's third and short. Use your big bodies, right? And football is getting away with that. I just had an opportunity to see that. You know, it's fourth and inches, and we're still in shotgun running inside zone. Get the big bodies. Let these boys get behind their pads and fight their way through for the first. Tight end wing set with Eddie Kelly to the left. Pass looking into the boundary. A little curl-arrow combination. Pressure immediately in Huff's face. 12 and white. Taekwon Cooper Isaac comes in. 6'2", 240. The Warriors, we saw, if they have one weakness on this team, it's their offensive line. They're young. They're trying to develop continuity. They struggled against Apopka High School yeah. in that early season matchup, facing up against a strong Blue Darter defense. 
And, and the thing about it, they're young, but they're big, right? So how you help out a young offensive line is you have to communicate. Let's not guess. Let's talk it out. Walk Jayden. it out. Talk it out. Jaden Gibson. Oh, premature. Two receivers that time. Asad Wasim, Jaden Gibson, both premature before the snap count. Not what you want when you have second and goal inside the eight. That will move it back to the 13-yard line with 8.07 remaining here in the first quarter. Yeah, I still like that fade ball call, right? I still think it's there. Well, I can uh, tell you they weren't stock blocking on that last it was, fade. It was passed. It was passed. They were ready to get no going. No signals from the sideline. They have the same play call. Was seen going on the corner route. Tolan, the linebacker in coverage. Mismatch by the slot receiver. Tolan is 6'3", 210 pounds, is committed to Coach Orgeron with the LSU Tigers. But Wasim is an elusive 5'11 jet at the slot receiver. Picks up his third touchdown of the season. That time a 13-yard pitch and catch from Tyler Huff. His third touchdown, excuse me, his eighth touchdown on the season. He had two last week in impressive impressive performance against Windermere. Yeah, I can say this about uh, Wasim, man. Listen, very explosive. I actually had an opportunity to know him, man, so he was a little guy, man. He's been around for a while, but he is an explosive guy. But a big shout-out to the quarterback for a great throw, beautiful arc on the ball, giving Wasim opportunity to pull that in for the, for the touchdown. I like the fact on the corner route, he didn't throw it to the back corner. He threw it to split the pylons. So he's running away from that linebacker coverage where if, if you're a linebacker or corner, you know if you're in a trail position, you're trying to get depth. Yeah, They're you're running angle away from it. Defenders aren't taught in pregame drills or practice drills to run angles towards the sideline. They're taught to flip their hips and get that first step going deep. Allows Wasim to run away from him. Definitely, man. You know, the corner route is no longer the corner route anymore. It's more of a sickle, right? Where you kind of get out there and you kind of bend it and you work your way and get some depth and now these quarterbacks are getting good. Offensive coordinators are getting so good they know they throw it just a little shallow because like you said you're taught to grab depth especially if you're losing or if you're behind in the trail technique. So that was a great throw, great catch uh, by the combination and I'm excited to see what they do for the rest of the game. Early score from Huff to Wasim puts the Warriors up six to nothing. The extra point was no good. Will that come back like it so often does to haunt the Warriors later in this football game? Yeah, it normally does unless they put the foot on the pedal, man, and hit the gas because if they don't, those one points can definitely come back and hurt you. And I know Dr. Phillips does have a, have a good foot, uh, field goal kicker. West Orange is now 7 for 9 on point after tries this season. Ball taken on the six yard line from Dr. Phillips. Steered up the right hash goes number four, Amir Johnson, the senior tailback. Takes it out to the 32 yard line where Curtis R. Groves will bring the Panther offense out for their second series. Yeah, this is a great job right here. Great return, right? Gives Dr. Phillips some good momentum coming off of that last drive, right? Not necessarily a short field, but they have an advantage. They're not coming out on the 20, 25 yard line. Let's see what they come out with. Again, when we did that game last time, Dr. Phillips has to. They have to use formation. They have to use motion in order to manipulate this defense in order to make the run game just a little bit easier for them. The strength of the Panther offensive line is to the left side. Peyton Kirkland, who's we previously featured, 6'5", 330, joined next to him by 6'3", 280 pound senior Devin Hill. Kamani Harris in motion. Legal procedure call. Yeah, it looks like it was a false start on that left side. It was a little little head, little jump right there. Looks like it was on Kirkland's side. I couldn't tell if it was actually him or the guard next to him. Offsides, Warriors that lined up oh, in wow. the neutral zone pre-snap. Sets up a first and five out to the 38-yard line for the Panthers. West Orange is so dominant up front, led by two outstanding senior defensive ends. 56 is here on the home sideline. Brendan Flake, 6'6", 230 pound senior. On the opposite side, nine in the stand-up rush in. Eddie Kelly that goes both ways, 6'4", 265 pounds. A lot of motion. Jonas Fortline this time on the jet sweep. Inside out pursuit. 
for a short gain of maybe one, setting up a second. Actually did not pick up anything. Second and five with 7.28 on the clock. Yeah, man, that was a great tackle by McDoom, man. Coming in, filling the alley, right? They had it sealed off on the outside, made a jet sweep, cut back up, and McDoom filled it in from his safety position, man. You're going to love job. watching McDoom fill. He's always precise in his angles, and West Orange defensively, from a schematic standpoint, will dare you to run outside to his side because they know he can track down just about anybody. Going deep this time to their outstanding senior receiver, Fort Line. But as a quarterback, where did he leave the ball? He didn't get no safety in the middle of the field, and he left the ball on the outside shoulder to the corner side where the corner had leverage. If he gives Fort Line a chance towards the middle of the field, who knows what happens on that play? Yeah, sometimes, and I don't know if it's a miscommunication or just an ill throw, but... Like you said, there's no safety in the middle of the field. Put it out there. Let the receiver go get it for you. West Orange plays a lot of quarters. The safety was actually robbing that time. Middle of the field, wide open. Our Groves just did not see it. What yeah. was once a first and five is now a third and five. Amir Johnson offset to our Groves right. Our Groves looking right again. Little quick little hitch route. Too high. Fortland lost his balance right when the ball arrived. And for the second time in a row, the Warriors get the Panthers off the field quickly. Yeah, it was good, man. Like I said, they got they, they get them off the field, man. You're gonna see you're gonna see Dr. Phillips have to come up with some adjustments. I know, I know coach clock oper operator needs to make an adjustment. Incomplete pass. <laughs> Incomplete and we've pass. already lost 15 seconds. They finally noticed it. We're down to 630. That pass sailed over Fort Line's head with 647 remaining on the clock. Well, I guess they figured they're not going to fix it. We're just going to go ahead and play the game. So here we are, down set height. This time Warriors with only one back. Are they coming to get it, Coach Hayes? Flag down for illegal man down the field, which West Orange will obviously decline. Ball tackled at the 38-yard line of the Panthers. High snap. Jaden Taylor is the punter. They list him on the program as an athlete. We saw him against Jones play tailback, outside linebacker, defensive end. He is an athlete. But what does an athlete want to do? Is something something go, As soon as something goes wrong, I'll he looked to run it. I'm ready to take off, man. Look, Coach, I got an eject button right here, and I'm ready to use it. But West Orange, just perfect in their punt rush, had two gunners with outside containment. Taylor could not get outside, was forced to throw it just to get rid of it. West Orange early in this game with 621, winning the field position contest. Jaden Gibson in motion, checks over here into the boundary. Huff looking to throw quickly with a hitch, like it, take it, makes one man miss. Second man is tolling in on the tackle, but not before they push him out of bounds at the 31-yard line. Easy seven-yard steal. Easy. I tell people the hitch is the best play in football. It's an easy throw. It's a great confidence throw for your quarterback. And the best thing about it, once you made the corner miss, you're guaranteed to get another six, seven, eight yards, if not more. Gibson lines up to the field and trips. Then they motion him and check him across. That forces the whole defense to adjust. Corner steps out oh into God. off coverage. Easy play. Obviously, in film study, West Orange knew they had something there. They went to it, setting up what appears to be second and four. Gibson this time once again motions to the other side. Met by number five in white, Latori Hollinger Jr. Same play the other side. And if Hollinger Jr. looks for it, he may have picked it. He was yeah. looking for the hit on the big senior receiver. It definitely could have been a pick six, but you see right there was miscommunication between the quarterback and receiver. He, he kind of came off the ball but didn't look back for it right away. And Huff was saying, you know what, I'm getting this ball on my hand right now with off coverage. We have 5.30 remaining here on the Varsity Sports Network in the first quarter. We're going to step away from the action just for a brief moment while the officials have a water break. There's not a lot of places you can go where exactly what they put on their signs is exactly what you get in your food. So many people think that the way I eat and the way I train and a lot of things I do in life are because of sports. I want to be as healthy 50 years from now because every day that God gives me, I want to make the most of that. Clean juice, healthy, fast, organic food. Welcome back to the action here at West Orange High School. Senior Tyler Huff getting ready to take this snap on third and four for the Warriors. Trips receivers into the boundary, Coach Hayes. Zone back into the boundary. 
Those three receivers were able to seal the edge just enough for Walden to take it down inside the 25-yard line, down to the 24. Enough for the first down. Yeah, great, great, great job right there by Walden. Great job by the offensive coordinator using formation into the boundary, making that happen. But I guarantee he's going to come back and use the field side of this because actually Dr. Phillips is outnumbered to the top of your screen. Dr. Phillips playing a zone defense too high. They're worried about the speed. There it Buck is. Sweep away from the trips with Walden speed, able to beat Jaden Taylor to the edge. Pickup of five yards, it appears. You want to win on first down. Anything three, four yards on first down is a win. The Warriors are picking up five, six, seven early in this game. Yeah, you definitely want to win on first down. That makes it easier. It gets the offensive coordinator opportunity to open up his playbook. He definitely can find out what's going on. But I'm loving what, what West Orange is doing right now formationally, man. Walden checks to Huff's right. Check with me from the sideline. Terrence Tolbert likes what he sees in the Apopka defense or the Dr. Phillips defense. He's going to attack with the same play they scored on. That time, excellent coverage by Jashad Presley, 6'2, 192 pound sophomore. And I've noticed that early on. Dr. Phillips is trying to manufacture physicality and get more speed on the field since we saw them earlier in the year. They're rotating a lot of bodies on defense now where they only played about 12 or 14 early in the season. Yeah, unfortunately, man, I've been in this situation. You're trying to rotate guys because you're trying to find the right chemistry. That's the biggest thing right now I think Dr. Phillips is facing, finding the right chemistry when it comes to the defense. But here's West Orange with a great motion. They're going to manipulate this right now. We're not on. They're trying to watch it. Now here's the beauty, like I said, here's the beauty about it, right? If you win first down, I'm going to just keep going because I'm not sure what it is. I know we had a little bit of technical difficulties, but uh, here's the beauty of this, right? If you win first down, you have opportunity on second down to take a chance. Unfortunately, they get a penalty and it brings them back. So now you had a 39 situation. Tight end wing up top. Huff looking for the curl route to his receiver. And Gibson, Jaden might be the only receiver in Central Florida that catches that one. Yeah, great. Here's the great part about it, right? The great part about that is he ran the ball one yard deeper than the sticks. It got him the first down. Ball was a little bit high. When you have a 6'5 wide receiver, guess what? Let him go climb the ladder and go get it for you, man. Great throw. Outstanding catch radius. Picks up the first down, down to the 13-yard line of the Panthers. You would have to think after a blowout defeat last week at the hands of Lake Mary that Dr. Phillips has to get off the field here without any points. Yeah. Buck sweep to the trip side, makes the first man miss. I like what he did. He saw the flash action by the linebacker, put the foot in the ground and got right to the uprights. Another pickup of six yards on first down. I used to tell my players all the time, everybody takes geometry in 10th grade. The fastest way between two points is a straight line. Get vertical right now. Put your foot in the ground, turn your shoulder pads north, and let's hit it, man. Hit the gas and get vertical, man. Great job by that running back. Identifying that, putting his foot in the ground and getting vertical, trying Coach to get Hayes, it to the end zone. Look at this set. Unbalanced. Four receivers tight end dead up top. You think they're going left? Power left. Walden pick up a one with the place where that flag was thrown. Don't know if the ball's on the ground with the way the head official went running in to the action, but where that flag was thrown from the umpire, most likely holding is going to back up the Warriors. Yeah, man, I'll tell people, man, one of the worst calls in football is offensive holding, man. It's 10 yards. Hold it on, takes I thought back. you were a defensive guy. You're saying holding on the offense is it's, the worst call? It, it is one of the worst calls. It kills That's momentum. That's your head coach talking right That's my head coach Not talking. DC talking. Let me tell you something, man. It's a momentum killer, believe it or not. Think about this. You're right here. You're smelling the goal line. All of a sudden, those 10 yards come out of nowhere, and it hurts you. Now you have to try and readjust. Think about this. You're double sticks. If you get a holding call on first down, it's first and 20. 
So people have to understand those holding calls are detrimental when it comes to drive, and those are typically drive killers. Second and 16 this time. They were able to overcome a penalty earlier in this possession with an outstanding catch by Jaden Gibson. Motion to trips, looking nowhere to go, but Huff and leaves it deep in the back of the end zone from Gibson, but ran him out. But I've noticed that. When Huff was a junior quarterback last year, he would have taken off. He made plays with his legs. Sometimes it's okay to say, yeah, I'm going to try to hold it and let something develop. But Dr. Phillips had no coverage on the far side of the field when Huff started to roll laterally, stepped up in the pocket, started to skate laterally. There was no Dr. Phillips defender within 10 yards. He could have easily picked up the first down with his legs had he chosen to. Definitely, maybe even 15. And now that was a hard throw because he was actually going, what, to his left. He's a right-handed guy, has to flip those hips around to make that throw. If he's running right now, at least it's a third and manageable. Now you're in a third and 14 situation. You got to get it beyond just to get it the first down. Fakes Walden up inside, looking for Eddie Kelly on the post. Drag. Great coverage. Here he goes. This is what he can do. Peel oh. back block by Eddie what Kelly. What is he doing? Peel back block by Eddie Kelly at the two-yard line. Is going to negate Gates. that touchdown. He did not have to make that block. Huff walks in easy. The Panther defender would have never made that tackle. Cheap shot behind the play on Kelly. You can bet Coach Granado's going to talk to him about that. That block was unnecessary. Yeah, definitely, man. And not even the fact that, and from here, they appears call to it be a touchdown, though, and a dead ball foul. I think he may have gotten the first when it, when it happened. So, unfortunately, it may have gotten the first, but it's not. Oh, I don't know. That's close. That, I, That's really, really close. From our vantage point, Huff had not crossed the end line when that block was made. And it, they do have it correct. That is coming back. Late last season, Huff decided he was going to take off with it. Made plays especially. He was the difference maker in a round two victory over Timber Creek, especially in the second half. He would take off with it any time it was third and long. The Wolves' defense could not stop him. But coming into tonight, through the first four weeks, had only rushed it nine times for a net gain of one yard. Now, the reason for only one yard is his sack yardage goes, goes against, against his him, rushing yeah. statistics. Except of creating a trophy that they called the Old Orange Crate. Mm. The 30th contest, Dr. Phillips leads the all-time series 18 to 11. Walden off tackle to the left, runs immediately into Jenkins. Damascene, the senior nose guard for a pickup of one. Now, there is an interesting side story. Okay, tell one me One year it. when Dr. Phillips won it, you're supposed to bring the trophy to the field each night you play each season. Right. West Orange High School, because the crate was procured from a science teacher at West Orange High School, the original crate. Okay. Well, that same science teacher got a phone call on a Friday morning. The trophy had gone missing. Oh, no, not the seniors. So the actual <laughs> trophy that will be rewarded tonight is the second edition of the trophy in this series. And nobody ever has figured out what happened it's some, to the hey, original trophy. It's in one of those guys' man caves right now. The original is sitting in the guy's man cave right now. All right, a bite at a time. And that's what Dr. Phillips has to do right now. Take a bite at a time. Keep continuing getting first downs. Don't worry about the gusto. Find out what's working. Rodney Wells is an excellent coach. His staff is an excellent staff. They can figure this thing out, but they have to do it now. Submitted with a kick inside the goal line. It's a touchback. Panthers will drive start from their own 20. Want to give credit where credit is due. That West Orange teacher taught agriculture, and that's something that you'll see. They'll celebrate tonight. It's one of the neatest trophies in all of Central Florida. It's pretty cool. You got some press coverage right here by, by, by West Orange here at the bottom of your screen and the top. The low snap, new quarterback in. We saw this at Jones High School. Senior Jair Murphy, who's a two-way player, lines up at receiver and quarterback, comes on for this third series with 125 remaining in the first quarter. Yeah, I think West Orange right now is not necessarily concerned with the passing game of Dr. Phillips. They're going to stack this box. They're going to get eight, maybe a late nine into the box with their two high safeties. But look how shallow they're playing. Yeah, two high safeties at six yards. And they're, <laughs> they're six, seven yards, and they're basically just the edge setters to keep everything contained. One-on-one -on -one coverage with the corners. Yeah, and they send it out here. You got McDoom splitting the difference. Quarterback 
inside isolation behind his big left side of the line of scrimmage will set up a third and one. Got an injured player down. Looks like to be for West Orange. Hard to identify the numbers. Uh, he's back up. But, uh, yeah, like I say, it's third and one. And this is exactly what Dr. Phillips has to do. It may be long. It may be methodical. But that's how you have to do it. The longer you stay on the field, the less time West Orange offense is on the field. Max Delansky, number 90, senior captain, nose guard for this team. Second on the team in sacks with two. Five-man front by the Warriors. Same play, same play by the Panthers. Murphy with the carry again. Enough for the Panthers. First down tonight. That looks like it will be the last play. 17.1 seconds on the clock. Clock winding now. Looks like that will be the final play of the first quarter. We hope you're enjoying all the action tonight here at West Orange High School. You are watching the Varsity Sports Network. The nicotine in vapes can affect your physical performance. Text Garrett to 44455 to hear his story. Brought to you by The Facts Now. First down here to start the second quarter at beautiful West Orange High School. Stan starting to fill up. Murphy back to pass. Pressure in his face. Tries to evade it to his left. Looks like the Warriors have another sack. Came in tonight with 15 and a half sacks on the season. Pick up the first one tonight. Panthers with a loss of four. Yeah, man, great job actually by West Orange. The quarterback eluded a couple of them, but because they were relentless in their pressure, they ended up getting that sack for a three, four-yard loss. Six sacks against the Blue Darters in an impressive defensive performance early in the season. Five sacks against Windermere a week ago. We're out number here to the bottom of your screen. You got Safety two defenders. calling for help. Brings the stand-up in outside into an apex backer position. Movement. They could easily call that on the quarterback because he started to pull out, which drew the West Orange defensive line, but nobody noticed that. But us. The sack yardage <laughs> is back. After the five-yard march off. After the five-yard march off, it'll be second and eight, Dr. Phillips, with 11-14 here in the second quarter. Yeah, they got lucky beating those sticks. Again, they, they, they were behind the sticks on first down. Here's what's happening with, with them right now. They're coming out now they're in a passing set. West Orange walks back into the box. Easy bubble, but with the pressure coming off the edge from that outside linebacker, forces the high throw. For number six, Jonas Fortillion. Fortillion goes 6'3", 180 as a senior. That was still too high for him. Setting up a third and eight for the Panthers. Still don't understand on incomplete passes tonight, Kyle, why the clock keeps running. I don't know. I think somebody got to go somewhere, man. But, uh, you know, and the, and the referees are not fixing it, unfortunately, and Dr. Phillips is not fighting it. If I'm Rodney Wells, I am, I am acting up, man. Cause Rodney of, Wells, again. if I'm a fan, I want a prorated portion of my gate payment. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, man. We're going to find out here again. They open it up. Let's see if the quarterback keeps this deal. There it is. He's there. This is what Murphy does, but third and eight against this stiff front of the Warriors only picks up about a yard so Dr. Phillips it appeared a promising first start to this drive picked up their first first down of the ball game but now it's fourth and five offense is staying out on the field right now with 10.06 and ticking here in the second quarter let me see if they can get them to draw them off sides right quick if not they'll step back because they do have an athlete at the punter We'll find out right now. Let's see if they can draw them off sides. Fort line is the athlete in the slot. Third receiver in from the Panthers sideline. Look for him to get involved in this action if they do snap it. He's not even looking at the snap as the quarterback is going through the fake cadence. Looks like what you said is happening right here, trying to get the Warriors to jump off sides. Rodney Wells Jr. repositions to the right of Murphy. But the Panthers are in no hurry. They'll take the delay a game as they yeah. bring their punt team onto the field. I have to be honest with you, Billy, for a second. I thought they were going to snap that. And I was saying, man, if they don't get this, that's going to be some real tough sledding to come back. But in this in this change right now, in this change right now, Dr. Phillips is definitely going to have to 
find a way to get their footing. They're doing what we saw them earlier doing at Jones. They came out, they ran the ball, then they changed the strategy, let's, let's pass the ball, then we're going to run the ball. That's what's happening right now, and nothing is really working. you got to find some continuity in this game. you got to find out what's working and stick to it. Quarterback did well running the ball. They come out on the quarter change, they want to pass the ball, and it netted them nothing. So hopefully they can get through this second quarter and figure out what's going on, uh, talk about it on the halftime, and make some adjustments so they can keep the streak alive. Taylor with the punt, fielded at the 38-yard line of the Warriors, makes one man miss. Going to get a blindside block by one of the Warrior defenders. Peel back block, which is going to bring this one back in the name of safety. It was the correct call. While we sort out this penalty, we have 9.04 remaining in the second quarter. Penalty will go against the Warriors. Helmet to helmet contact is the call down on the field. That will take the Warriors offense back. Mike Granado's out past the numbers to try to figure out which Warrior is the guilty party so he can coach him up as he comes off the field. Coach Granado and his staff do an excellent job teaching the fundamentals of this game. And as you said earlier, a couple special teams plays. A play down on a touchdown, what would have been a would-be touchdown. Yeah. You're getting some enthusiastic, over-enthusiastic blocks on peelbacks, blindsides that are going to be called every time to protect the players down on the field. But it's miscues like that in a big district game that can hurt you. you the, know, that yardage that you're losing. They would have had excellent field position outside their own 40-yard line. Now they'll drive start far hash at the 30-yard line. Splitbacks this time, new set by the Warriors, come off tackle to the left, a pickup of one. Heavy hit by the Panthers on the right side of their defense. Yeah, real quick, but to talk about those penalties, man, just to show you, right now a huge penalty, right, takes points off the board. A huge penalty here right now does what? Pushes them back another 15 yards. So it does, it's a drive killer. So we're going to go ahead and take it to commercial here, man. We'll be right back after these messages. Valspar Signature, beautiful color holds up to common stains and cleans up easy. Take back your walls and discover what's possible at Lowe's. Welcome back to West Orange Field with 849 remaining here in the second quarter. Warriors 9, Panthers 0. While the trainers from the Dr. Phillips athletic staff attend to their injured player on the field, we want to feature West Orange's outstanding senior receiver, Jaden Gibson. 6'4", 185, the senior captain, comes into tonight, 11 receptions, 221 yards, averages 20.1 yards per carry, four TDs on the season. He's second on the team in all-purpose yards behind Terrell Walden Jr. with 221, and he's got a big decision, Kyle, to make coming up here on October 13th here on West Orange's campus at 2 o'clock He's going to have a bunch of big-name schools hats in front of him. The University of Florida's. University of Florida's hat will be there. University of Georgia, your school, Miami, Auburn, South Carolina, Tennessee, Baylor, FSU. There's a lot of D1 coaches, recruiters holding their breath, hoping he picks their cap. Here it is. Going deep to Rocky Rudolph. Ball placed out of bounds. Good coverage for the Panthers by Jamez Hamilton, the junior, ran Rudolph out of bounds, making that a tight window for Huff to insert the football into. Yeah, definitely, man. Let's go back to Jaden Gibson real quick, man. He has a big decision. I've been looking at his profile here. They're saying that he's 78% going to Florida Gators. I'm a Miami Hurricane you fan. You were there in the swamp last week. I was in the swamp last week. You know week. they I... love big receivers. Yeah, and that would be got one. two of them. They always <laughs> have them. Van Jefferson, I watch a lot of They got a bunch of them. They got a bunch Sunday. of them. But my Hurricanes, Billy, let me tell you about my Hurricane. We need a guy like that. I don't know what you're talking about. I need a guy like that that can take the top off. But let's get back to the game. We'll get back to that young man in a second. Huff looking oh. along the Panthers bench. Mm. Quick out. Excellent under coverage by Zion Trimboli. The senior safety jumped under Jaden Gibson, 
making another difficult throw. And for the first time tonight, the Panthers take the Warriors off the field quickly. Warriors picked up only two yards on that drive. The yeah. Panthers, you know, have to make a play defensively or in the special teams to help their offense out to get some energy on that far sideline. Yeah, sometimes, man, defensively, you have to be the spark to spark your offense, right? You either have to get that interception that takes it back. You have to do something to, to break the momentum right now. Even though they only got two yards on here, West Orange has had the momentum this entire football game. Brendan Flakes, the defensive end, is the Warriors punter. Punt taken on the 27-yard line of the Panthers by Cameron Metcalf. Metcalf, the University of Columbia University commit. Dr. Phillips loves sending kids to the Ivy Leagues. Here's a great stat before we head to commercial. Dr. Phillips has 41 kids playing college football and two in the NFL right now. That's Rodney awesome. Wells is not only about football, he's about education. The Panther staff does a great job on that campus. 8-12 remaining here in the second quarter. Panthers zero, Warriors up nine. Here at Chill Cryo Sauna, we help you chill out, literally. Using cryotherapy, this innovative treatment exposes the body to very cold temperatures, thus stimulating multiple health benefits, such as improving the speed of your recovery and your range of motion. Cryotherapy also can boost metabolism, as well as your immune system. And let's not forget, increase your strength while helping you eliminate pain. Here at Chill Cryosana, we offer multiple services, including red light therapy and localized or whole body cryotherapy. A better, healthier you is just a phone call away. Call us now to book an appointment and don't forget to ask about our membership programs. Panthers drive start at their own 32-yard line. Mm -hmm. Murphy still at quarterback. Amir Johnson off the left side for a short gain of two. Very difficult to see the numbers. West Orange has the orange jerseys with silver numbers outlined in blue. We're up high at the top of the stadium. Very difficult to pick who's in on the tackle each play. Wish we could see it better to bring you the names of those deserving athletes down on the field. Also want to feature tonight, we have a lot of stats that we can share with you when it comes to the players at West Orange. We pull the stats off Max Prep Sports. Dr. Phillips High School stats are not on Max Prep Sports, so we're not playing favorites. We just have West Orange's stats. We are unable to share with you the stats Great of the tackle. Panthers. Great tackle by McDoom. Guess who? McDoom from his safety position. And guess what? I didn't need to see his number. I can tell by the way he plays who that guy is. McDoom comes in, lays down the lumber. Third and one situation, man. But, again, he does a great job filling from his safety position. And I just want to see your reaction when I share with you. He's also one of the best soccer players in Central Florida. I heard that. I did hear that. I heard that he was one of the top soccer players in the uh, in in the, in the uh, state, man. So that's awesome. Speed kills not only on the football field, but also on the soccer field. Soccer coach here at West Orange, longtime soccer coach, does a great job. Scott Fisher. Johnson bounces oh, it. First big play of the night. Got McDoom to stick his nose inside. One of the yeah. few times he's wrong. <laughs> bounces it across midfield, out to the 41-yard line of the Warriors. Yep. That gets the far sideline up to their feet, especially the fans in the stands. Yeah, McDoom got nosy on that play, literally. Stuck his nose in the wrong hole, and my man bounced it outside because that play was supposed to be there. But the inside linebacker did feel it and spilled it, and therefore uh, McDoom got caught. But he has such great makeup speed, it didn't end up being a bigger play than what it actually was. Dr. Phillips has to stick to this formula right here. This is what's working right now. 21 personnel, two backs to the left to the tight end side of Murphy to the left. Quick pitch outside trying to get the edge. Cannot hook. Ed yeah. Kelly. Yeah, I, I don't think you're I don't think Dr. Phillips this year is stronger than West Orange, right? I mean, I'm sorry, faster than West Orange. It may be it may be a little bit stronger going downhill, but you're not going to outrun this West Orange football team. Oh, great, They're too fast. Great 
pre-snap adjustment by the Warriors coaching staff on defense. They saw the formation. Kelly initially lined up here into the boundary. Once they saw the tight end H back up top, they adjusted Kelly to the far side of the formation. One man wrecking crew destroyed that last play, leading to a two yard loss. Second and 12 with 538 and ticking for the Panthers here in the second quarter. Yeah, definitely, man. I'm going to tell you something that would be very interesting. Dr. Phillips has this right now. If you can get a guy up the seam, it's wide open. I know McDoom is there, but he's actually focused trying to help out with this corner over here, man. How about man. the H-back right up the seam? It's right up the play seam. Action. McDoom is spread out to, to honor four. There it is. Oh. But he didn't take it deep. They went post behind him. And for the second time, and I don't understand it, you got two posts coming from each side running into each other. I mean, yeah. Middle of the field is open because McDoom takes the H back on the out route. They get yeah. the safety to suck up on the out route. One on one with the corner Warrior got man. open, and two receivers taking each of their corners to the middle of the field. Right, so usually what you do to complement that route, you either run a dig underneath it in the post over the top. Therefore, you create a level situation some for the kind safety. Of curl on the backside to uh, let, some, your, let yeah. your front side post get to the other hash. Yeah, but that way you that way you create a level situation for the safety. If he sucks up on the dig route or the the, the old school ten yard in, if he sucks up on that, you throw the post over his head. If he stays back with the post, then you throw the ten yard in. Uh, they got to find ways to complement these routes. But that seam was open, but he broke it off. If he takes it right up the middle, it's actually touchdown. The H back would have continued on his track. Nobody had him. And it's, it's still there. Safety on the backside rotating over, which makes it one-on-one -on -one with Fort Line along the Panthers bench. No safety help. Delay a game, though, will back this up another five yards, setting up a third and 17. Both teams tonight with unforced errors, penalties. Hello, Tampa Bay. Is your vision affecting your hobbies and lifestyle? From cataract surgery to LASIK to complete eye exams, Newsom Eye is here to make sure you experience your best vision to match your lifestyle. For 20 years, thousands of people like you have chosen better vision with Newsom Eye. Now, it's your turn. To ensure you have access to the best eye care, Newsom Eye is excited to announce the opening of a new Pinellas County office location this fall. Visit NewsomEye.com to see third down. Third down, money down for a defense. Can the Warriors, they've backed off their safeties this time. Panthers have to push the ball down the field. Dude. Going one-on-one, -on -one. miscommunication though. Fortline runs the curl one yard past the sticks. Murphy thinks he's taking it deep up the sideline. So difficult for high school players if that is actually a check with me based on corner leverage. Yeah, man, I've actually gone through that and I've realized we couldn't do it just based on the look because you have you have very young minds thinking they see something that's not there. So if we don't get the, the subtle hand signal, we use very subtle hand signals, right? Like rubbing your hands together. That's letting you know, hey, I'm cutting this thing short. Or I may, what, touch my pants or something. That lets you know I'm taking it to the house. Well, we had to do that. It happens post-snap and it has to happen within a certain distance, like sure. the first five yards. Does that corner have the cap of the route capped where the receiver can't win the deep route? Happens all the time at the college level. If you're trying to oh. catch and look at the Block. Warriors, make the first play in the special teams. Block punt picked up on the far sideline. Warriors will take it the distance. That right there is a <laughs> way you think West Orange had the momentum. They definitely had the momentum. The meter is broken. The wide receiver, Assad Wasim, who's usually back deep, was on the far side, gets the fortuitous bounce mid-stride, takes it the rest of the way, and just that quick, Warriors are up 15 to nothing as Jake Simonetta comes on for the next extra point attempt. Dr. Phillips jumps off sides prematurely. Will Coach Granada, they missed an extra point earlier. Will he try to get that point right here, bringing the offense back out on the field? Warriors coaches are calling. Terrell Walton Jr. jumps off the bench. Looks like Coach Granado has made the decision. Here comes the Warriors offense back out on the field. And I see this so much. I'm going to tell you something. I had to learn this. Wildcat. Terrell yeah. Walton Jr. in the Wildcat. They're going to get heavy. Defenders coming out on the field as the upbacks in this blocking formation. You'll probably see two defensive players to the right along with the running back. This is Terrell Walden time. Warriors about to get physical with the Panthers. Get in there. 
Great job. Great job. I think I think West Orange smells a little bit of blood in the water, if you're asking me. It's starting to happen. You see the momentum. Dr. Phillips, like I said, they had something good going, but then they self-inflicted wounds, right? You can't. They can't overcome those penalties. So they have to be able to overcome those penalties and take advantage of the opportunities that they do have. Simonetta kicked down the West Orange sideline, fielding at the 10-yard line. Bring brought out to the 30-yard line. Jair Murphy, the quarterback. How often do you see the quarterback on kick KOR, kickoff return? He's the one that brings it directly out to the 30-yard line. As the Panthers come back out, we have not seen senior quarterback Curtis Ardro, Argroves in three drives. Curious to see if Argroves comes back out or will they stay with Murphy? Yeah, you know what's interesting about that as I'm looking at Dr. Phillips and, and been, I've been here uh, probably about six years now and I know that team extremely well, had many opportunities to coach against them. But to see them using certain players all over the field is telling me Coach Rodney Wells is stirring the pot trying to find the right chemistry, trying to find the right recipe. And the trouble is... 66 players are on the roster, 37 are seniors. Two years ago, those around the Dr. Phillips program thought this would be the year. They never saw this coming back when this group was sophomores. Yeah, and that's interesting. Usually when you have a very senior heavy team, you have a very, very good team. Of the, the continuity is there. The chemistry has already been established because these guys have pretty much come up together, man. So it's a very interesting dynamic of what could potentially be happening at Dr. Phillips. Uh, high school right now with the football program so I'll be interested to find out kind of what's going on because trust me that's a story program they have great coaching right they have great community great support man pick up of six on first down Argrove set to take this snap Rodney Wells Jr. on the carry, trying to go left behind Peyton Kirkland. Actually Amir Johnson, Johnson on the carry that time most Takes it out, play. actually Hold loses a yard on the play. Setting up a third and five yards here. 352 and winding here in the second quarter. Johnson comes out this time at tailback. Ten personnel. Panthers running multiple receivers off the sideline. Three receivers here to the Warrior bench. Fort Lean. I wouldn't be surprised right here. Up top. Here, I wouldn't be surprised. This is a great time for their their famous or their for me their infamous receiver screen deal. Donald Trust screen. me. Here it is, boy. They Johnson tough. can flare this way. Here it is. Get involved in the blocking. Slip him up. Hit the quick little stick route by the inside receiver number eighty. Do not have him right now on my roster. Do you have him? I'm looking for Dr. Phillips. Flip it. That's John. 80 is not on the roster. Another, yeah. actually, it was yes, 80. They have brought a lot of young players up as they've struggled early in this season, trying to build depth. Nice pitch and catch by Argros. First down, out to the 48-yard line of the Panthers. 2:52 and winding on the clock. Trips into the boundary. Two up for the quick little screen that you're looking at. Safety over the top. Ball on the ground. Missed exchange. Argrove's fortunate enough to pick it back up. Takes it out to midfield for a pickup of two. 235 and counting. Listen, West Orange is not respecting the pass game at all. They actually had a guy covering the number one receiver. The safety, I mean, they had a guy covering number three receiver, and nobody pretty much well, 15 yards off the... They were respecting the, the quick screen pass, <laughs> nothing down the field that last time. Yeah, definitely, man. So it's interesting to see how this works out. I mean, like you said, the quick hitter is there. You got a guy splitting the difference, which is awesome. Johnson. But you got one-on-one, -on -one, really no safety help. Set there it is. They got the first down earlier. They go right back to it for a pickup of six, setting up third and two inside two minutes remaining here in the first half. Dr. Phillip has to pick up the pace right now just a little bit. Uh, I know the chains stop after you get the first down, but again, it's still high school, right? We've seen our clocks right now haven't been always been super accurate. Get but that uh, hitch <laughs> twice in front of that safety. Can they be setting him up and baiting him for a hitch and go right down the middle of the field? Well, we said the middle of the field is open. Between the hashes has been open all night. It's still open right now. And it's 3-on-3 three -three right there down the middle of the field is wide open. Quarterback Iso up inside with Amir Johnson leading. Picks up the first down. On third down, they had to get that first down. 
Clock stopped to move the chains with 125 remaining. West Orange content to watch them do that, though. They don't think they can push it these last 41 yards. Minute 18 now counting. Press coverage, meeting outside receivers in their face. Very aggressive. Argrove's looking one-on-one -on -one here to the near sideline, trying a back shoulder pass. Trying to hit his senior receiver, Fort Lane. Outstanding coverage. Yeah, great coverage right there. Ball was well underthrown. I'm not sure if his arm was hit when he threw that ball, but he has to be able to step into this deal. Sometimes quarterbacks in these situations, they're trying to hurry up so much, they lose all of their fundamentals when it comes to actually playing. The clock is stopped. There's no need to rush right now. Take your time. Get your breath up under you and deliver the football. Second and 10. Johnson steps up. He's usually stepping up to block, give his offensive line help. He's helping on the edge this time. Interesting. Pressure up top immediately. Argros doesn't even look at that point. As soon as he sees that defensive tackle flash up the field, he immediately tucked it. Hey, he saw the orange flash, and he said, I'm out of here, man. There's a lot of pressure. Third down timeout there by Dr. Phillips. Timeout. Dr. Phillips with the ball on the Warrior 35-yard line, setting up a third and four at this particular time. 50.7 seconds remaining on the clock. We're going to take a brief break and bring right back in a second to bring you all the action left here in the first. Here at the Athlete Recovery Room, you can count on us to help you in all your recovery needs. With passion and care, our team will assist you in improving your quality of life and becoming a healthier, happier athlete. We use various techniques, such as whole body cryotherapy and Normatec to proactively address your recovery needs before you experience any issues or pain. We offer membership package deals starting as low as $79 a month. Head to our website and try cryotherapy and one additional service for $39. That's 52% off. Call now to speak to one of our specialists. Third and four here at West Orange High School as the Panthers offense comes back out. Two by two set, two receivers each side. Tailback dotting the pistol. He does that because West Orange is blitzing the running back side. Hard to make a decision as a defensive coordinator. Got a smash concept, tries to go deep. Come here comes the flag. Stumbling at the oh, last he almost second. Pulled it. I'm glad he did it. I've coached yeah. the receiver position and the <laughs> defensive back position. That receiver that time is the young man that we featured twice on first down catches tonight, number 80. Don't have his name. Was stumbling right when the ball arrived. That was yeah. not pressure by the safety over the top. 45 and a half seconds remaining on this fourth down call. Rodney Wells has already made the decision. They're going for it. Three receivers here to the Warriors sideline. You got to get this first. Three. You get this first. You need the receiver to sit down in the hole. They've hit that They're inside zone. inch route, but you got the backer now drifting out to it. It's not there. Forces the oh bubble. Corner comes up immediately with a physical. You arrive when the ball arrives, and that's what he did. 42 seconds remaining. Jaden Robinson on the strike. Nice, clean shot right when the ball arrived. Warriors' Tyler Huff comes back out for what appears to be their last drive of the first half. While the Warriors get set up offensively, if we look at the Orlando Sentinel score report around Central Florida and district play, Sanford Seminole hosting Chaminade out of Hollywood, a state runner-up last year. The Seminoles up 15-7 with 7.20 remaining in the second quarter. Lake Mary High School continues to score points, 27-7 over DeLand with 2.38 remaining just before the half. Huff sets back, looking for a crossing route, going, forcing the ball to Gibson in the middle of the field. Safety was in better position than his receiver with 36.4 seconds. Ball falls incomplete. Other scores around the area. Apopka up 13-0 over the Evans Trojans at halftime. Windermere and Osceola, no score to report. Here's an impressive one that's going to surprise a lot of people. The Haggerty Huskies hosting the Winter Park Wildcats, tied 14 14 with 3.02 remaining in the second quarter. Lake Nona in what appears to be the battle for that district championship as Huff rolls to his right. The Lions are up 13-0 over the Boone Braves with 4.45 remaining the in the first quarter. Huff with enough to pick up the first down with his legs, 30.1 seconds remaining. Ball out to the Warrior 45-yard line. Oviedo looking to rebound from their first loss at Timber Creek last week. Leads Flagler Palm Coast 
with 11.49 remaining in the second quarter. Quick pass, safe pass out to the explosive Terrell Walton Jr. I like it because it gets him the ball into the boundary. He can get what he can pick up and then gets out of bounds, saving a timeout. 23 and a half seconds as the Warriors cross into Panther territory. I'm going to just say this, Billy. I like the fact that the West Orange Warriors are not taking their foot off the gas. Even though you're up 17-0, they're still trying to score right here with 23 seconds left. I love this kind of football because you have to dominate when you have these opportunities. Easy pitch and catch. Rocky Rudolph, can he get out of bounds? He does. He stayed in. Oh. Michael Wine, that's a good call. His backside ended just in bounds. They'll coach him. Coach Granado's down there in his ear right now. Rocky, you got to get out of bounds to save the timeout. 16.3 seconds remaining here in the second quarter. 17 nothing Warriors. You know, some people in Alabama call him a star. Of course, my, my beloved Miami Hurricanes call him a striker. He's one-on-one with the slot Ooh. again, and that's just unfair. That's just unfair. Jaden Gibson, they had the Panthers had outstanding coverage. 24, Cameron Metcalf, three-year starter and captain for the Panthers, is in Gibson's hip pocket. Metcalf goes 5'10". Gibson goes 6'4". Huff just puts it in the only place that someone can make a catch, up high like a rebound. Gibson is a dual sport athlete, and with 7.2 seconds remaining, the Warriors will get one more chance to push the ball into the end zone before they they would have to bring out their field goal team. Yeah, you definitely take a shot right here, right? You have this a six is where five. that timeout earlier with Rocky Rudolph not getting out of bounds comes into play because that's their last timeout, that's I their, believe. That's their last one, so you have to take an end zone shot. You take this shot in the end zone, hopefully Coach Wells is telling his defense that. But guess what? I'm going to isolate my 6'4", six, 6'5", six, receiver. I'm throwing the ball up just like I did before. Let's see who can pull this ball off the glass for the touchdown. And speaking and he, of Terrell Tolbert, the offensive coordinator, he's talking – Right now, you can bet he spoke to his senior quarterback saying you cannot take a sack in this situation. You get pressure immediately, get it out of bounds towards a receiver or get it incomplete fast, saving time on the clock. Gibson lined up on the field and this came off. That should have been a penalty. They had 12 in the formation. Huff has no receiver now to his boundary. Cuts back at the last second. Still don't know why that wasn't a penalty, though. The official on the sideline watched the receiver line up, and then he just walked off the field, and the corner for the Panthers had to go back into the formation late. If I'm Dr. Phillips and Rodney Wells, I'm furious at this moment. Yeah, if that's 12, if that was 12 in the huddle, then that's what it is. Coming Coming out of a timeout, think about it. They had 12 on the field inside the hash. Sure. Inside the hash, they had 12 on the field. They walk off the guy late, literally one second before he snaps the ball. Now the corner's confused. He's trying to figure out where to go. And guess what happened? He gets caught inside, and Huff comes around the same corner in which the offense happened. So that's something amazing. I know Coach Wells will probably send that one in. But, hey, man, this is high school football. It happens. But we, but we got to get it going. They ruled him out of – they have not put the points on the board. They ruled him out of bounds. Walden goes in easily. Same play this time left behind those two big defensive tackles. The ball carrier. That was actually the touchdown, Kyle. We thought it was the two-point play. Now they put the points up on the board. Warriors 23 on the last play of the first half. There'll be a free play right now as Jake Simonetta comes out on the field to attempt this extra point that will put the Warriors up 24 to nothing, heading into the locker room at halftime. Like I gotta say, man, West Orange is not playing. They're putting their foot on the gas here. And it'd be interesting to see how they come out with adjustments. Will they stay with the same game plan? Kick is up and it's good, man. We want to say that for a long time, huh? Final play of the first half puts the Warriors of West Orange High School up 24 to nothing over the Dr. Phillips Panthers. We hope you are enjoying all the action tonight here on the Varsity Sports Network. We're going to step away for the half. We'll be back shortly to bring you the rest of this ballgame. Yep.
Hey guys, it's Coach Fran with D1 Training, Dr. Phillips. I just wanted to let all you football players know that football is a very high energy game, fast paced. You not only need to be strong, but you also need to be powerful and agile. Here at D1 Training, Dr. Phillips, we got everything you need from bands to chains to sleds to get you as strong and as powerful as possible. I see you athletes working. Let's keep getting after it. Hopefully we'll see you soon. Hello, Tampa Bay. Is your vision affecting your hobbies and lifestyle? From cataract surgery to LASIK to complete eye exams, Newsome Eye is here to make sure you experience your best vision to match your lifestyle. For 20 years, thousands of people like you have chosen better vision with Newsome Eye. Now, it's your turn. To ensure you have access to the best eye care, Newsome Eye is excited to announce the opening of a new Pinellas County office location this fall. Visit NewsomeEye.com to schedule your appointment at one of our four convenient locations. Newsome Eye is proud to be an official partner of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. You deserve Newsome Eyes. There's not a lot of places you can go where exactly what they put on their signs is exactly what you get in your food. So many people think that the way I eat and the way I train and a lot of things I do in life are because of sports. I wanna be as healthy 50 years from now because every day that God gives me, I wanna make the most of that. Clean juice, healthy, fast, organic food. Here at Chill Cryo Sauna, we help you chill out, literally. Using cryotherapy, this innovative treatment exposes the body to very cold temperatures, thus stimulating multiple health benefits, such as improving the speed of your recovery and your range of motion. Cryotherapy also can boost metabolism, as well as your immune system. And let's not forget, increase your strength while helping you eliminate pain. Here at Chill Cryosana, we offer multiple services, including red light therapy and localized or whole body cryotherapy. A better, healthier you is just a phone call away. Call us now to book an appointment and don't forget to ask about our membership programs. Hey everybody, Charlie Bales from CB Supplements here. We are your collagen company. Specifically, your multi-sourced collagen company. We're the first and only NSF certified multi-source collagen on the market. Our product helps athletes recover and strengthen their joints. But our product also has a bunch of other awesome benefits. It can help you sleep. It can decrease overall inflammation throughout your body. It can help you with your digestive system. And lastly, it can give you the hair, skin, and nails of the gods. Check us out on our website, cbsupplements.com, and follow us on all the socials, at cbsupplements. When you're a star high school student athlete, you compete tirelessly on the court and in the classroom to achieve your one dream of playing in college. Top schools recruit you and even offer you a scholarship. Then senior year hits, and you find out that the class you took actually doesn't count. Your GPA is .25 off, or your SAT score is 10 points too low. All because your counselor, your coach, and your parents couldn't make sense of the rules. And by the time you find out, it was too late to catch up. Boom. Game over. Honest Game is the clear pathway for getting in. We automate the process so the student, the parent, the coach, the counselor, and the college all get real-time eligibility updates. With Honest Game, everyone knows what to do before it's too late. In the last 20 years, total athletic scholarship money has grown from 2.5 million to over 3 billion. With the NCAA on the verge of allowing student athletes to earn money on their likeness, recruits and college coaches will more than ever need to know their eligibility status. Learn more at honestgame.com and let the dream live on.
welcome back to this week's Varsity Sports Network Game of the Week. We are here at West Orange High School. The Warriors with a commanding lead, 24 to nothing over the Dr. Phillips Panthers. For the second week in a row, Rodney Wells takes his team into the halftime with what appears to be an insurmountable lead by the opponent. You've been in this situation before, <laughs> Kyle. Unfortunately. What are you saying, <laughs> and I have too, what are you saying to your team that is looking? Th this is a program that since 2007, other than Apopka and the Osceola Cowboys, the Dr. Phyllis Panthers, those were the top three. You're talking the elite, the upper echelon of high school football teams in the Central Florida area and some of the best in the state. So often their season would be ended by either the Blue Darters, the Cowboys, or a great Tampa plant team. They're not accustomed to being in situations like this. And now for the fourth time this year, they're trailing at the half by a wide margin. Yeah, you know the hardest thing as a coach, you understand football goes in cycles, right? But as players, they're never, they never get a chance to see the cycles because they're always a part of one. And so what you have to get these young men to understand, especially right now, especially with such a story program, that you are in the process of trying to build something. And that's what they have to understand. Coming out here in the second half, once they understand that is the process they're in right now, you have an opportunity. Also, they have to play each play. Don't try to play the entire game on one play. Don't try to win it. Don't try to get everything back. Perfect that play and do that every 25 to 30 seconds, meaning every new play, and you're definitely trying to get it come out on top. Second half is underway. The go. kick. Oh, he should have let it go. I heard you saying it. The ball was pushing him out of bounds. He caught it just before it went out. Uh, he caught it in. Well, hey, luckily, he was standing out of bounds when he caught it. That's what a re referee threw the flag. So because he's standing out of bounds, he's technically out of bounds as well. So therefore, they'll receive the penalty. Uh, on the kicking team, and the ball should be on the 35, if I'm not mistaken. Bring it out to the 25, won't it? Five-yard penalty. Still marching the ball out. They will bring it to the 35-yard line, where Tyler Huff will start this first series of the second half. Loved what I saw from the senior quarterback. Wanted to make plays with his legs. Can't account for him. West Orange just did the same thing that they did earlier with another, with 12 men on the field again, and then running one off late before the staff. Still not called. Don't understand it. You were pointing violently to the young man as he came off the field. Don't understand that. Little extracurricular. Don't, yeah, it's, that deserved it. The big offensive lineman down there. Demario Tolan with a physical hit, dropping the running back for no gain. One of the Warrior offensive linemen took exception to that strong hit by Aiton White. I think it was Chris Dauphin that they're going to flag on this one for the unsportsmanlike. Question is, is it dead ball? Yes. Or was it during the play? Yeah, it's dead ball foul. What happened is the momentum has stopped. They got in there. They were pushing and fighting in the sense of trying to fight for yards. But, of course, offensive linemen always, what, taught to protect your players. He was trying to protect the running back at that time by getting the defender off of him. It was so far after the play that the referee had to throw that flag. Penalty takes the Warriors back to the 24-yard line. Second down, they have to get to their 45. Tolan shows blitz inside, comes free. Swing pass to Walden. You blitz and you miss, and this is what can happen. Trying to weave. Talented run takes it inside the 35-yard line of the Panthers. You blitz, you live by the blitz, you die by the blitz. Huff diagnosed it quickly, pre-snap, had his check down into the flat. And the best part about it was, right, the formation allowed that to happen. Actually, they overloaded here to the field. They swing the running back out there. One guy missed, is left up to that safety. Walden does a great job getting out there in space, making the guy miss. But he gets kind of dragged down from the backside. But great play by a great play design as well by the West Orange Warriors. Walden down to the 34-yard line. Eddie Kelly, senior H back in motion, sets up. Runs the little flat route, levels concept, puts it back inside, does Huff. Looks like it's completed for another first down to number three, Asad Wasim. Wasim came into tonight averaging 14.4 yards per catch. 
had two touchdowns entering into the, tonight's contest, scored the first time on an excellent corner route to put the Warriors up 6 nothing. Tyler Huff will take this snap, ball on the far hash at the 20 yard line, first and 10, formation set into the boundary, Gibson cheated in. Unbalanced set, four receivers, bunch set plus an X receiver, buck sweep out of the pistol to the right, run down from behind from athlete Jaden Taylor. Another flag comes in late. Yeah, unfortunately, man, for Dr. Phillips right there, they're getting emotional now, right? And this is where Coach Rodney Wills had to do a good job of keeping them in check. <laughs> Excuse me, you just had a big run by Walden. Now you get a decent run here, and now you're going to get a 15-yard penalty on sportsmen like for dragging down a guy on West Orange teams. Dr. Phillips is known for playing a physical brand of football. It starts on defense. Head coach Rodney Wells has been their defensive coordinator for the past two decades. But a change we learned at halftime during the week. Offensive coordinator stepped down. Coach Wells, for the first time in his coaching career, is actually calling the offense. So he's doing double duty. You know that stretches him really thin <laughs> when it comes to calling a defense. Something he takes great pride in. One of the best outside linebackers the Orlando area has ever seen when he played in the Panther program prior to playing for the Orangemen in Syracuse. Eddie Kelly shifts right. They fake RPO. They fake the power play to the right, trying to come back on the fade route. Looked like the receiver, I believe it's Rocky Rudolph, was running a slant route inside. Miscommunication between the senior oh, quarterback and his senior receiver. Sets up second down from the nine-yard line, eight-yard line of the Panthers. Yeah, definitely, man. You talked about Coach Rodney Wells having to call plays. I've been in that situation as well, right? The offensive coordinator, uh, I think he steps down. So Coach Wells, he's the face of the program. He's the head coach. It all falls on his shoulders. So what does he do? He steps up. He doesn't make excuses. He steps up and says, hey, man, I'm going to take this. I'm going to. I'm going to take the wheel in essence. And so watching him right now, he's standing back on the 36-yard line completely away from his defense. He's letting his other coaches call the defense tonight, something you never see when you watch a Panthers football game. Pistol formation, going to have a holding call, it looks like. Walden with an excellent cutback. No backside pursuit by the Panthers defense, but at the point of attack when Walden inserted, Going to have a holding call with 10 minutes and one second stopped on the clock here in the third quarter. Yeah, exactly. Back to what I was talking about, holding call is the worst call. Look where the, look where that, the second down marker is, right? Right at about the nine-yard line. Watch how far this thing goes back. It changes your entire playbook, man. I'm telling you, the holding call is the worst call on offense of all time, man. It looks like you are right at the goal line. Now the ball is literally sitting on the 20-yard line as we speak, man. So it's second and double sticks, basically second and goal from the 20-yard line. And uh, this will be very interesting to see how they go through and do that. Warriors, 9.47 and counting. Jaden Gibson goes into the boundary on the far sideline, forces the Panther safety over the top. Light box, four down, three down linemen, two linebackers. Huff looking for the quick pass here to Rocky Rudolph. Rudolph looking at the defender. Jaden Taylor, we've seen Taylor make a couple of physical tackles tonight. As the ball arrives, Rudolph is looking to find out where Taylor is, does not have tunnel vision on the football and lock it up. First thing you must do on that quick little bubble pass, sets up third down now from the 20. Yeah, hey, as they used to call them back in the day, crocodile arms, right? Because you know that guy's coming with 14 pounds of pressure. He's ready to put it on you, man. But uh, you got to be able to stay concentrated. You got to be able to catch the ball and see what you have to be able to do there. Now, again, penalties. This is something, this is really the only uh, thing I've seen in this game so far that is going to hurt West Orange is penalties in bad situations. Third goal, Dr. Phillips playing cover three, motion to two by two for Huff. Linebacker goes with him. Huff looking here on the home sideline. Two slants. He hits Eddie Kelly on the slant. So hard against cover three. Holes in the middle of the field. Terrence Tolbert dials up another touchdown. And with 9.23 remaining in the third quarter, score is now 30 to nothing, Warriors. And you have to believe Coach Granado's loving this. 
The Warriors came into tonight only averaging 226 yards per game on offense, down from a season ago when they averaged 270. Yeah, I mean, like I say, West Orange is hitting on all cylinders tonight. Only one thing that I have to say from a penalty standpoint, they have been getting them at the, at the wrong time. Too in many essence. penalties. Too many penalties. Too many penalties. And detrimental. 10-yard, 15-yard, unsportsmanlike. It won't hurt them tonight against the Cowboys from Osceola High School. They will not be able to make these same penalties, and we've seen it twice now against Apopka. We've seen it tonight against Dr. Phillips. Too many unforced errors that either slow down drives or kill drives. You won't be able to recover against a great Osceola defense if you're making this many penalties on offense. Exactly. That slant right there would be stopped on the catch if if that was the case. If not, highly contested uh, throw, man. Ball taken just inside the playing field. Returned out. Does hit a seam here on the near sideline. Kicker turns him back in. Simonetta doesn't make the kick, but he does turn him back in where a host of Warriors can make the tackle down at the Warrior 40-yard line. There is a flag down, however, on the Dr. Phillips 38-yard line. Looks like this one will be coming back. Our Groves now drive start. The officials have marked it 15 yards further from where their kick returner was tackled. But unfortunately, if you're a Panthers fan, the right tackle, Chris Herrera, the senior jumps off sides. A legal procedure will bring this back five yards before they can even take their first snap with 9.09 left in the third quarter. Yeah, it's tough, man. Like I said, they, they, the referees had opportunity to get that thing right. And then you start off, come off right up already behind the sticks. Two receivers up top. Rodney Wells Jr. off the left side. He does not. He's not letting the scoreboard dictate his effort. Takes the ball down inside the 20. Gains about eight yards down to the 17 of the Warriors. Yeah, that was actually a very good run by him, man. Good, strong run, good, hard run. If that's something Dr. Phillips can continue, and I know this season may not be looking like it's supposed to, if they can build off of that, and I know it is a senior-heavy team, but you got to be able to create some positivity out of this deal. That Continue to run, do that. That last run behind senior tight end Michael Masonette. Try the same play again. Wells cuts it back inside, spins off of a tackle, takes it inside the five-yard line. Yeah, here's a momentum shift for them, right? Again, here's what penalty does, right? Here's what – oh, my goodness. Here's another penalty unsportsmanlike. It looks like well, it's going to be against Dr. Phillips. calls it, 12 yards behind the line of scrimmage, there's only Panthers standing next to him. Unsportsmanlike conduct against the Panthers. Instead of first and goal from inside the 10, this will now be first and goal. And if you're at home right now, you're probably wondering, that was a real late call. Probably something was said Verbal. that he heard. Yeah, when it's usually that late. There's some jarring going on. This is what I was talking about. Both coaches are going to have to get these teams under control. Emotionally, Dr. Phillips is hurt. Emotionally, West Orange is super excited because they're in a game where they're actually going to win this and break this streak for Dr. Phillips. And so you got to get them under control, man, order so they can get through this game. Same play, third time. Wells off the left side. Ball was snapped at the 20. Takes it down just inside the 16. Another flag comes in by the head official late. Wells Jr. being pulled off the field by his father. Amir Johnson comes in as the running back for this next play. Coach yeah. Granado pulling defensive linemen off the field as well. Yeah, here's a situation I've been in these as well, man. Look, sometimes the head referee will call an official timeout. Talk to both head coaches, get them an opportunity to talk to both teams. Hey, either calm it down or we starting to put guys out. So he'll give a warning shot and say, listen, head coach, look, Coach Wells, Coach Granado, talk to your team. The next unsportsmanlike, I don't care if it's two, the next one he's gone. 
You know yeah, what I mean? And that's important because explain what happens if somebody picks up two unsportsmanlike penalties here in the second half. Yeah, so if you pick up two, you're actually ejected out of the game, right? So you're actually ejected from this contest. And if contest. you're ejected, that could have ramifications yeah, down the road. Yeah, sometimes it's not just here. They'll go through it and review it. The and officials it could be, will return a report in. Yeah, and it could be a six-game suspension. To the FHSAA, and if the FHSAA deems worthy, Young man could sit out six weeks. Yeah, so you go to sit out six weeks, that's pretty much your, senior, your season, especially if you're a senior. And even a junior now, especially with the way the games are going on. Second and goal from the 16-yard line for the Panthers. This time they start right, bend it back with Amir Johnson. Carries the ball inside the 10 down to the 9-yard line. Setting up third and goal with 7.31 remaining here in the third quarter. Yeah, this right here is going to be a pivotal down. Do they come out of it and pass the ball here? If they get stopped, it'll be third and third and goal from the nine. Masonette, the tight end. You're in a passing right situation. Argroves with the quarterback ISO on the stop immediately is El Eddie Kelly. We've called his name several times tonight, along with Jamarius Willis, the 6'2, 270 pound senior. Yeah, this is definitely four-down territory. You know, you want to get on the board if you are Dr. Phillips. Maybe kick the field goal. You got an injured warrior out here. Back to the action on fourth down for the Panthers. One of the few times tonight they've been deep in warrior territory. What will Coach Wells, calling the offense for the first time in his coaching career, dial up here on this important fourth down play? You in man press? Ball is thrown up. Actually, it was a push off on the offense, but no call, no foul. This is Sports Threat, and this is the new free Sports Threat app, changing recruiting forever. Once again, here we go. Know the name, know the flow. The first social network made for athletes, where you can show your talent. Thought I was weak, huh? You ain't see the work I put in all week, huh? And where you can be seen by athletes, fans, and coaches nationwide. Upload all your stats to the app. Get exposure to college coaches. Get clout and get certified with a check mark that will change your life. Join the squad. Download the Sports Threat app today. Sports Threat, it's always free. Coach, in this game, this is more than just bragging rights. Coach Granato in his second year, 6-4 and four last year in his first season guiding the Warriors program, looks like he's going to move to 4-1 and one tonight. He's trying to build a program, get some excitement in the Winter Garden community, and that goes all the way to the youth leagues. And the youth leagues on this side of town, at Olympia High School, at Dr. Phillips High School, they used to be strong feeder programs into both of those schools. Those two feeder programs have folded up. All the youth action is here on West Orange, closer to West Orange High School. You can bet there's kids here in the stands tonight that play in that youth league. Everybody these days are about recruiting <laughs> parents, kids. They want to play in a winning program. The residual effect of a blowout by the Warriors over the Panthers when the Warriors are trending positively and the Panthers in 2021 could be two and four in a matter of minutes. The residual effect of this game could be devastating for the Panthers for years to come. Oh, yeah, man. Everybody wants to be around a winner. I can tell you that right now, right? Everybody wants to be around the people that got the W. And when Dr. Phillips was on top, everybody wanted to and be you there. You know it. I know. You trust me. I had to get a lot of my guys, man. You had but uh, at Olympia that yeah. ended up in the Panther program. Yeah. So, with that being said, I mean, like I say, West Orange is doing what they're supposed to, right? They come out. I wish they keep their foot on the gas, keep though. The vertical Don't pedal. Yes. On do the not, ride down. Yeah, because you what you want to do is create this same atmosphere. You want to be able to. And here's the biggest thing about coaching. 
you want to go back in the middle of while you're coaching and use this piece right here as a reference when you have to make that halftime speech to say, look, when we had a team down, we didn't take our foot off the gas. We continue to push because there's going to be a game where it's going to be close or you're going to be down and you have to find reference points throughout the seasons that these players can, can revert back to to understand exactly what you mean. Great. Great performance by the Panthers that time. Quickly getting the Warriors off three and out, making them punt deep from their own end. Punt sails out of bounds inside the Warrior 35-yard line. They're lining it up to mark it right now while we wait for the spot. 4.45 remaining here in the third quarter. Once again, we hope you're enjoying all the action here on the Varsity Sports Network. Warriors 31, Panthers nothing. Whether you're starting up a new company, face managing the affairs of a deceased loved one, or need assistance drafting a will or trust, finding the right attorney to help guide you on a journey can be daunting. Here at Pineda Law, we are here to help. Attorney Matt Pineda concentrates in estate planning, probate, business formation, and business law. Located in beautiful Heathrow, Florida, Pineda Law proudly serves Orange County and Seminole County. Contact Pineda Law for a free consultation. Statewide coverage from the Panhandle to Central Florida to Broward and Miami-Dade down to the Keys. All 22 sports from football, girls and boys basketball, softball, soccer, lacrosse, baseball, even swimming and track. Shows and live streaming broadcasts on various spectrums. Roku, Apple TV, Fire Stick and On Demand 24-7 Seven days a week, only on BSN. Welcome back to West Orange High School. Curtis Argroves takes the first down snap. Low snap, able to hand it off to Rodney Wells Jr. We've seen a young man running Rodney possessed Wells. here to start the third quarter. Yeah, he's fired up, man. Look, at, if, if it's me, I'm going behind the coach's son, if you ask me. Coach, coach, your son getting the ball, and we're going to take it in here. I mean, think about it. That was an eight-yard run right now, okay? Eight-yard run. He's continuing to go. He's getting good yards, he's getting behind his pads. punishing defenders when he makes and contact. He, and he's punishing them. He's not looking to run around tackles. He's looking to run through tackles. Definitely, man. Lines up this time in front of our groves. Appears to be a pass. Instead, it's quarterback Iso behind Peyton Kirkland. Argrove splits one tackler, safety over pursuit. First touchdown tonight by the senior quarterback, Curtis Argroves, a 22-yard run off left tackle on quarterback Iso. Yeah, great call by them, but also noticeably you can tell West Orange has some of the younger guys in right now. We can look at it and see. Right now they're not in any threat in regards of, um, you know, maybe losing this game unless something drastic happens. But right now you can tell some of the, the back-end players for West Orange are some of the younger guys so they can get some experience, give some of the older guys a break. Let's not risk injury. Let's keep their legs fresh because we got a, some tough trending going down this, this uh, schedule coming up, man. You want to talk about a tough schedule for the Dr. Phillips Panthers as we watch the extra point split the uprights. First score of the night for the Panthers. Score at this moment with 404 remaining in the third quarter is 31 Warriors 7 for Dr. Phillips. But you want to talk about a tough schedule. It doesn't get any easier for the Panthers. They welcome in the Coco Tigers next week. Ryan Schneider's team coming into tonight 3 and 1, one of the top RPI teams in the FHSA rankings through the first two weeks. Only loss for the Tigers was down to Venice High School on the road. A one-point defeat to the Indians, 21-20. Mm. Venice is the number one ranked team in all classifications in the state of Florida. Victories for the Tigers over Osceola that we were bragging about earlier. An even better a shootout last week in the 50s over Treasure Coast, 56-55, another top team that made a deep playoff run last year. The Tigers play one of the most impressive schedules around. They will come to Orlando in what during the preseason looked like a diamond dynamite matchup. It doesn't get easier for the Panthers welcoming in Ryan Schneider's Tigers. After that, guess what? 
if it does, if it's not difficult next week, they play Osceola the following week. So the Cowboys with a K. Doctor Phillips has to line up against two state-ranked teams, two powerhouses in the next two weeks, and unless we have a miraculous comeback, trailing right now by 24 points, the Panthers will be two and four heading into next week's play. I'm gonna tell you this: they need to hang a sign on the locker room door that said, "This don't kill you." It definitely make me stronger. Because they got a tough, I'm telling you, they got some tough sledding, boy, uh, when it comes to this. And, 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 and you're going to play the games, right? So this right here will definitely find out with Coach Wells about how he can get these young men through this, how he can keep their heads within the season. Because, you know, when you fight these guys and you go against these type of teams, man, let me tell you something, man. It's easy for guys to tuck tail and run. It's easy for guys to say, hey, football is not for me. It's easy for guys to say, you know what, coach, I'm going to go be a math elite right now. And so you got to be able to keep these guys engaged, find a ways to keep them uh, uh, enthused about this game, man, because it can easily break your spirit sometimes. New quarterback into the action for the Warriors, Trevor Jackson, 6'2", sophomore, comes into tonight, 10 of 22 through the air for 117 yards and three touchdowns. Came on in the fourth quarter against Apopka, and I was really impressed by this young man and his skill set. Easy pass to get him into the flow of the game, but you can see the continued chippiness along the Panthers' sideline. Yeah, they got to be able to keep this thing under wraps, man, because what you don't want to have is a bunch of high schoolers, man, going after it. I've been, <laughs> I've been in those as well, too, my man. You don't want to go through that. It's a lot of explanation. It's a lot of paperwork. A lot of things go on. A lot of ex- You got to talk to principals and all that. And all you have to do is simply talk to your team. Let them know. Give them the fair warning. Trevor Jackson did play last year at the varsity level as a freshman, was 2 of 4 for 13 yards. Equally capable on the ground. He can take off, but he is a quarterback that looks to pass first. Tight end, H-back set to his left. Buck sweep here to the Warriors' sideline. Run down from behind is the tailback for a short three-yard gain. Tyquan Cooper Isaac, the senior in on the tackle, runs it down from his backside defensive end position. Sets up third and five with 257 and counting here in the third quarter. It'll be interesting to see how how West Orange attacks this. Are they going to be conservative and just give some guys a go? Are they trying to actually get this first down? They're bringing in some of the starters, so we're going to see. The second came back in. It's kind of a little sniffer behind Jackson. Look for him to be involved in this play somehow. Yeah, he'll begin to pass out the backfield. Hard count draws. Tyquan Cooper Isaac, who just made the last tackle. Crosses into the neutral zone, giving the Warriors an easy first down. Talking about this Warriors offense, they came out in week one in an explosive fashion, blowing out the East River Falcons, racked up 346 yards of total offense, were limited to just 83 yards versus Apopka, negative four yards rushing that night in a bitter loss over in Apopka to the Blue Darters. Bounce back the last two weeks in blowout victories, but only picking up 232 yards in a 49-3 win over Wakaiva, and then 241 yards in a 49-0 victory over the crosstown rival, the Windermere Wolverines. Quick pass again along the Dr. Phillips sideline. Another short gain. Looks like forward progress will be marked down at the Panther 44-yard line. Yeah, I actually had a double screen, right? We used to call that Tampa, kind of Tampa screen, right? So you have the receiver screen to the top, and you had the running back screen here to the bottom. So he had a two-way go. If that re- if that screen was taken away, you turn around and you throw it to your running back. Usually it's hard to take away both of those. He decided to keep it up top to the wide right receiver. And uh, he fought, had, a, had a good fight, but he, he, I think, personally brought it too far inside, and the pursuit got to him. Catch it, I always say, get up the train tracks, which is the hashes. I like the move by Coach Granado getting his young quarterback into the action here in the third quarter instead of waiting until the fourth quarter. This could go to a running clock, and these are meaningful reps for the sophomore quarterback. Play action, rolls into the flat, hits no. the senior. That time there is an appeal back block. Could have been Eddie Kelly struck out of bounds late is down at about the 32 yard line out of bounds hit that time flag on the field Warriors taking exception to the late hit out of bounds that will tack on another 15 yards 
from where the ball is spotted down. Penalty, the Panther defense is already marching backwards. They know it's against them. More jawing taking place between Warrior defenders sitting here on the sideline with their helmet off and Dr. Phillips' Panther defenders. This is turning into a powder keg, which you do not want to see yeah. if you're a high school football fan, let alone a coach, because of potential ejections. Yeah, man. And like I said, man, Coach Granada and the Western Orange Warriors got a good thing going right now. You don't want to see this thing get derailed because some guys get kicked out because they're drawing. So, oh, let alone somebody throws a punch because they get too emotional right now. I see guys on the sideline right now with the helmet off. They're doing a lot of jarring. Somebody has to take control because, it's, like you said, it's a powder keg, and when it blows, it's catastrophic, man. West Orange will snap this next first down from the Panther 18-yard line here near hash with 103 remaining in the action. One of the two teams did call timeout to try to calm their players and reduce the tempers that are beginning to flare down there on the gridiron. Warriors offense beginning to return to the action. Officials are still discussing that last penalty, standing back at the 25-yard line here on the near hash. 103, as I referenced, remaining in the third quarter. Yeah, they were actually holding it out because he was still and down. He was down, so yeah, they he got the teams off the field because of the jawing. Smart move by the officials to send the teams to their respective sidelines. No timeout called on either team. Trevor Jackson brings the Warriors offense back out onto the field. Always have to find where Jaden Gibson is. He's lined up on the hash, giving him an outside release one-on-one -on -one against Latori Hollinger, Jr. We're going to find out if they're going to put a nail in the coffin. inch mismatch going up it top is. to him. You can tell by alignment. Safety can't get there. Late. He's late arriving. Gibson stands up, taunts. Hollinger Jr., no penalty, surprisingly. But that was obvious based on alignment where Jaden Gibson lined up. You could tell he was running an outside release. Yeah, I tell guys all the time, man, the, the story is actually told by the alignment, right? If you look at where guys line up on a football field, they can pretty much tell you what type of routes in which they can run. I used to tell my players all the time, if he lines up two yards from the sideline, he's not running the super out, my man. He's coming back inside. So if he lines up on the hash, the number one receiver, He's bought himself real estate, meaning he's bought himself green grass in order to run away from you in, and that's what he, perfectly what he had. I would teach my corners that if they came to a certain position inside the numbers, even if we were man, we would go to outside leverage. That's right. Preventing the outside release because he did have safety help inside, but lining up head up, Gibson could get outside of him. Safety was stretched, couldn't arrive when the ball got there. Easy touchdown. Yeah. Sophomore quarterback on Trevor Jackson connects with his fourth touchdown pass. Another penalty now thrown late. Looks like it's going to be on one of the Warriors' offensive linemen as he returns here to the home sideline. 56.2 seconds on the clock. 38-7, to seven Warriors over the Panthers. We're going to step away from all the action right now for a word from our There's not a lot of places you can go where... Exactly what they put on their signs is exactly what you get in your food. So many people think that the way I eat and the way I train and a lot of things I do in life are because of sports. I want to be as healthy 50 years from now because every day that God gives me, I want to make the most of that. Clean juice, healthy, fast, organic food. We're back here at West Orange High School, Varsity Sports Network. District play here in week six in the Florida High School Athletic Association season. Warriors with a commanding 31-point lead, 38-7. 56.2 seconds remaining here in the third quarter as West Orange kicks off. Dr. Phillips will take this kick at their own 19. Tries to break it back across the field. Excellent, excellent safety play. Yeah, great job, man. Always a, a gunner on the far side waiting back for the for the cutback. Another flag, two flags down on the field, about 20 yards apart. Two different calls at this point. 
Yeah, you're definitely going to have an unsportsmanlike back here on the Warriors' 44, uh, 45 yard line. Uh, there was a little bit of extra blocking after. I don't know if the camera caught that because it was following the action. But uh, as a coach, I think every time special teams go, I don't look at the ball. I'm always looking backwards because I know that's where the penalties come from, not really at the point of attack. Penalties always come away from the ball, man. Well, let's look forward around the rest of Central Florida. The Orlando Sentinel scoreboard has Chaminade in the fourth quarter still up over number one ranked Sanford Seminole 23 to 19. Lake Mary, 11:49 left in the fourth quarter, hosting the Deland Bulldogs. Number two, Lake Mary, up 37 to 14. Edgewater at the half, 22 to nothing over Winter Haven. Jones, a commanding lead, 40 to six over Groveland South Lake. The Darters up now, 14 over the Evans Trojans in district play, 20 to six. Kissimmee Osceola, we've talked about them. They're in this district. District competition hosting the Windermere Wolverines 68 to nothing in the third quarter. Winter Park finally takes the lead at Haggerty High School in the fourth quarter, 28-21. Boone trying to mount a comeback on the road at Lake Nona. Argroves with pressure forces the ball out of bounds. No receiver to throw it to, but instead of taking what would have been about a 20-yard loss, Saves the play to live again. Second and 10 Panthers. Lions, though, Anthony Paradiso. Many project around Central Florida because of the weakness of that district. The winner of that game will be an, receive an automatic bid to the state playoffs in district in that 8A classification. That district travels south. The loser because of strength of schedule. Many people feel no matter what their record is at the end of the year, because of the RPI waiting, the loser will be out. They could have a great season. That's how critical that district matchup is. Trying to get Fort Lee in the ball inside. We saw that same stick route earlier, connecting three times for first downs. West Orange has made the adjustment, and the adjustment is to get that play side Perfect. linebacker. Don't play the run. <laughs> get out under number three. Yeah, let's get out up underneath the number three, man. Let, the the actual, side linebacker always has to push and wall off number three, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah, it? man. He almost had opportunity to steal it, man, but uh, just missed it. But he understood that because you can see his reaction afterwards. Timber Creek with a commanding 30 to nothing lead with 542 remaining in the third quarter. Argrove's trying to use his speed to beat the Warrior defense to the sideline. That senior was not running out of bounds. He took on a defensive back and tried to run over him. Yeah, he tried to finish him off, man. I, you know, <laughs> I, I thought he almost stepped out of bounds for a second and finished him off and protect himself. But at the end of the day, man, it was a great run by him, great stiff arm by that Mike linebacker on the dash play. We call them dash plays, right? I want to say it was Robinson that stepped up to try to make the tackle. It was either Castell or Robinson. Argroves was not running out of bounds. He was going to run over a Warrior defensive back. Got him balanced to the down, top. Roll up top. Argroves with a receiver gets hit as he throws it, but fortunately the ball goes just far enough to a def to a receiver who's unable to make that catch. Turnover on downs on the last play of the third quarter. We're going to take it to a break before we come back for the final 12 minutes here at West Orange. When thinking about chiropractic care, many don't think about new technology. At 360 Chiropractic, our chiropractors specialize in the activator technique, a low force treatment that distributes adjustments directly to the body. 360 Chiropractic is one of the few chiropractic clinics in the area that is fully certified and trained to use the activator method. We partner this method with other services like acupuncture, massage therapy, and rehabilitation. Contact 360 Chiropractic to learn more. 12 minutes remaining on the clock here at West Orange High School. Again. Warriors up 38 to 7. Again, right now, if they get a score on this drive right now, it will be 35 points. The clock will continue to run. They're only up 31 points right now, so they need four more points to get a running clock in high school football. West Orange making substitutions late. Receiver running across the formation. We've seen Jesse Shannon several times on the carry. That time up the middle for a pickup of one. Are you surprised to still see Jaden Gibson and Assad Wasim three and one in orange, still on the field, up 31 points? Yeah, because you know what? They still got to get a little bit better. I believe this is their, those two opportunities, the first time to play together. Um, 
you know, you still got to have a guy out there just in case you got to throw it to him. Uh, you want to have some weapons on the field for your young quarterback to help build his confidence as well. But I'm watching right there. He's stock blocking with his back to the play. Tackles made right behind his legs. Something like that happens. He's done potentially for the season. I totally agree with you, man. I totally agree. But as I always say, that is also too part of the Can't game and stuff. You're scared, but you're <laughs> up 31 points with 11 I, minutes remaining. Yeah, I totally agree. I totally agree with that, man. You know, you ought to be strategic in these type of things, right? Understand what you're getting. Understand what you're doing. But you got one-on-one at the top up here with Wasim, if I'm not mistaken. Let's see what happens here it is in that way quick little curl route makes the safety miss Metcalf uncharacteristically misses the tackle with seam picks up the first down strutting to the Dr. Phillips van yeah he's strutting but guess what he had a one-two step if he kept his legs about him, oh, guess what would happen? Oh, little Missy Ellie. I see him. If, there. If Let he me keeps... see you one-two step. <laughs> Did you just go there? Yeah, but if he kept it, he hit him with the one-two step, but he lost his balance. So I understand him celebrating, but it'd be better if you celebrate if you go across that goal line, if you understand what I mean. <laughs> First down, Warriors just inside the 30-yard line. Far hash. Jaden Gibson in the slot here along the Warrior bench. H back back inside leading on a play side linebacker big time tackle by 25 for Dr. Phillips do not have his name on my score sheet 25 for the Panthers made an impressive tackle that time that would be Jalen Janvier yeah. it looks like gain of five by Walden on that tag before the tackle that's how strong he is Physical contact hit at the line of scrimmage. He carries him for four more yards. 9.56 stopped on the clock at this second. Unsportsmanlike again on the Panthers' defense. We'll give the Warriors another first down. Ball will be on the 10-yard line. I think we've seen more yellow flags tonight than we'll see at Talladega in the race this weekend. <laughs> I'm trying There's to always big pileups in Talladega with, oh, with man, the yellow caution flags. We've seen more tonight than we'll probably see this Sunday if you're a NASCAR fan. Gibson going deep corner on the route. corner route. And, and ladies, that's how special he is and why Kirby Smart, Dan yeah. Mullen, Manny Diaz, Mike Norvell, they all want him because even though he was bracketed with a high coverage and a low coverage, just throw it up and watch that catch radius go to work. 44-7, to seven Warriors. Yeah, definitely speaking, this game will be over literally in 9 minutes and 31 seconds. It will be a running clock. It is currently 9-17, so by 9-30, everybody should be heading to the car. Uh, that's what happens in high school football when it is a 35-point deficit in the score. In the second half, you have a continuous uh, clock. Only thing that can stop the clock is timeouts. Other than that, balls being incomplete or run out of bounds, the clock will continue to run. Gibson last season, nine touchdowns receiving. That's two tonight, if I'm not mistaken, giving him six during his senior campaign. Ball pinned in, rolls out of bounds at the six-yard line. Will be a penalty on West Orange. So they'll move that. 644 and counting. We're going to step away from commercial when we come back. This game will be in less than four minutes. Max Muscle started all the way back in 1991 with the simple philosophy that we are consumers first. We had a desire to make sure that whatever we made, we would take ourselves. We love what we do. We were the first franchise system as a retailer to put certified nutrition coaches in every single store. We practice what we preach, we live it every day, and that shows through when we go into product development, we want to make sure the products that we're bringing to market are going to be products that are just as effective for you as they are for us. First and 10 for Dr. Phillips. New quarterback into the game for the Panthers this time. Actually, excuse me, it's the Coach. backup quarterback. Jair Murphy's back into the action here in the second half. Short gain off the right side. 
Well, Billy, I got to start staying corrected. I thought Jaden Gibson was done. Guess what? This guy's lined He's up playing at. corner? He's at cornerback right now. I'm like, who is this tall freshman? Come to find out, he turns around. I see number one on the back of his jersey. I guess Coach Granada saying, no moss, man. You're not getting anything else out here. I gave you seven. You're not getting anything from him, man. Well, if the Apopka Blue Darters fans are watching this right now, their super stud senior, Nakai Martinez, that's committed to UCF and Gus Malzahn, in a blowout victory in week one, he ended his senior season with a knee injury on a mm. jet sweep playing offense, something he seldom does. That's what you risk in yeah. a situation like that. And like I'm saying, man, look, I'm not in the locker room. I'm not here to really question, but I do have concerns in regards to a young man of his caliber. You know what I mean? He doesn't need this in order to get scholarship opportunity. He doesn't need the film. He already has the notoriety. And for him to be out there, like you say, risking unwanted or maybe unneeded uh, injury is crazy. You know, just to like say, especially out there tackling guys right now, get these guys off, get through the season. And keep them as healthy as you can for as long as you can. So something tells me there was probably a little wager between Gibson and the coaching staff to get him a rep. 4.55, the clock is stopped due to this injury, so we're going to step away from the action just for a second here at West Orange High. Hey, guys, it's Coach Fran with D1 Training, Dr. Phillips. I just wanted to let all you football players know that football is a very high-energy game, fast-paced. You not only need to be strong, but you also need to be powerful and agile. Here at D1 Training, Dr. Phillips, we got everything you need from bands to chains to sleds to get you as strong and as powerful as possible. I see you athletes working. Let's keep getting after it. Hopefully, we'll see you soon. West Orange Band just to our right, cranking it up, starting the victory party early here with 437 and winding on the clock. Amir Johnson offset right to Murphy. Murphy looks to throw here along the West Orange sideline. Takes his check down in the flat to senior Jared Davis. Excellent hit along the near sideline by a Warrior defender. 23 Alden Holly, 6 foot 160. The junior outside linebacker. That a way to play the flat responsibility on a rollout by your quarterback. They did a good job. Like you say, Jaden Gibson and McDoom in there talking. Two of the top players you have on your team. They're playing on the same side. Fourth down. West Orange runs on the punt return guy. Dr. Phillips is not electing to punt on this one. Fourth and five. Panthers electing to go for it with 342 on the clock. Three-man rush by the Warriors. One of those rushers gets home. Ball out. They're going to roll Murphy down. Warriors will take over here with 324 remaining in this ball game at the Panther 32-yard line. Oh, it's 315 right now. Do you pull out the mercy or do you hit the gas? What do you do? I don't know. This is a statement school. game. This is a statement school. game too when now. It's over. I'm going to the victory formation, especially <laughs> with all of the unsportsmanlike conduct penalties here in the second Definitely half. Right. I'm letting the officials know I'm going foot to foot. Victory. Quarterback's taking a knee. Let's get out of here. Yeah, like you said, there's no stoppage of the clock right now. You can probably get out of here. Even if you had to take three knees, take the penalty, even if you want to punt it, field goal it, whatever. Get out of this thing. Actually, you can't even stop it. So That last sack was from right defensive tackle Brendan Flake. 6'6", 230, the senior, already committed to Marshall, the thundering herd. Second on the team coming into the night in tackles. That was his fifth sack on the, on the season. He does lead the Warriors in that category. Yeah, he did a great job. He, has a, he had a great get off of a song. Best part of his pass rush, he had a hip flip in there, right? A lot of guys are just running straight, but he flipped his hips and got skinny. As big as he is, he got skinny, right? And then he got around that corner. The other side defense in slowed him up, and he just got him right, in the, right behind, man. Jackson still at the quarterback position. Jesse Shannon lines up in the tailback position and the pistol behind him. Little miscommunication. Jackson thought both receivers along the Panther sideline were each going to run five-yard hitches. The slot receiver took it deep. Jackson threw him the five-yard hitch. No receiver in the area. 140 on the clock. You asked what was going to happen. 
Warriors still pushing the ball in the air. They still get it Every down. Every rep is a, is a chance to get better, and that's what Coach Granado and Terrence Tolbert, they're getting their young quarterback meaningful reps here. Yeah, but they truly they truly are with some young guys in right now. So, like I said, you're going to take those opportunities. This is a big game. Go back with a, a takeoff route. Five-yard out by the inside receiver. Jackson elects to pull it down and take it off the left side. Only picks up about two yards. Setting up a fourth and six. Coach Granado is going to bring on his kicker for what appears. Ball spotted at the 28. This would be a 45-yard attempt. Well, Why we not to see if your kicker can do it? Why not make it the last season, play of the game? Deep in the season, this may be for a chance to win a game. You need to figure out how he will handle a situation like this, don't you? Definitely, man. You know, he doesn't seem to be a big guy, but that don't mean you don't have a powerful leg. Also, remember, this ball is short of the goal line. He can't be returned. So that, that oh. High snap. He's not going to get a chance. He Great falls job. on it back out at the 44-yard line, 43-yard line of the Panthers and 20 seconds and counting on the clock that will be the last play of this ball game coach Granado excited for his team the Warriors are lining up at midfield to walk across and shake the hands of coach Rodney Wells Dr. Phillips Panthers your score tonight here at West Orange High School Warriors 45 Panthers 7.